Banking is outdated, and in this video, we're going to explain why. My name is Carmen. And I'm Darius. And when we refer to banking, we refer to the action or the verb of banking. We're not talking about the bank itself, the noun, <laughs> because you need the bank itself. Yes. We're talking about the function in which we use the bank's Four. Thank you for clarifying that because we see y'all in the comments. All right. So in this video, let's go ahead and break it down right now, starting with what do we use the banks for? There's two things that we are going to simplify in this video. So the first thing is going to be a storage facility. The second thing is financing. So what do we mean by that? Storage facility is up first. So when you get paid, where does your money go? It typically, I would assume, goes into a checkings account or and or a savings account. Well, it first goes to the government, then it goes to the savings. <laughs> Thanks for clarifying that, Darius. <laughs> yes, it does go to the government first. So once the government gets their cut, where is your money going? It's I just going want I just account. want you guys to think about that because sometimes this nuance is so simple that we forget this step and we just recognize like, oh, I got the money, and we don't even think about that we're using the bank for storage. Right. Right. And, and I like the fact that you said that because we don't even think about. It. We, yeah, it's we, subconscious. It's subconscious. It was taught to us by our parents, and mm -hmm. their parents taught them. Mm -hmm. uh, well, maybe not. Maybe not their parents because they, they did it a little different. But <laughs> right now, for the reasons or purposes that we use banks today, we don't use cash anymore. We use uh, credit card or, or debit card. Yeah, or, yeah, <laughs> or the whole backyard in the backyard. <laughs> so, so again, think about that really quickly. Take a moment and just say, "I use the bank for storage. I use the bank for storage." And now I want to ask you why. Why do you use the bank for storage? Because that's the only option. Yes, and or that's probably what you've been told. Yeah. Once we are all on the same page, we can move forward. <laughs> so moving forward, we all understand we use the bank for storage. And and what we want to talk about today is the differences between like checkings and savings. So when you use your checkings account, that's because you have money going and coming, coming and going. The savings account is something that we always stress at the Wealth Nation channel where we're talking about you should pay yourself first. And when we say you pay yourself first, it's because you have money that you are parking with the intent to do something with, with the intent to grow money. It's never about using your savings account as a checkings account, because if you continue to dip, dip into your savings account, then this premise isn't going to work for you. Right. I want to repeat, this premise isn't going to work for you because I know many of you reach out to us and say, I want to do it. This is going to change my life. And you don't have sound financial habits. So let's go ahead and pause the video now. <laughs> if you have sound financial habits, let's continue. If you don't, watch one of our other videos about budgeting so that you can get to this point. Right. All right. So going back to the savings account. What I want you to understand too is once you put money into a savings account, the bank actually pays you a small percentage to store your money with them. Okay. Again, this is something that happens subconsciously. Many of us don't even know or know what the rate is. These days it's, it's slim pickings, but at least they give you something. Mm -hmm. So in your savings account, the bank is paying you to store money in your savings account. Okay. So all we're doing, it's called interest. <laughs> thank you. All we're, all we're doing is comparing apples to apples at the wealth nation channel. We talk about a product called whole life insurance and we use whole life insurance for many different reasons. The first part is because it ensures our entire life. We don't have to worry about renewing life insurance every 10, 15 years. We're covered for a hundred years. And the way we use whole life insurance in particular is designed with a component called cash value where we can access cash inside of our whole life insurance policy every time we pay our premium. Now, if you go to a car lot, I just want you to get this visual real quick. If you go to a car lot and you buy a standard trim, you that may just have a four cylinder vehicle. But if you uh, upgrade to the premium trim, you might have a V8. So what I'm talking about is the V8 <laughs> of whole life insurance, uh, for example. We're not just talking about a standard whole life insurance policy. This has something else inside of it that allows us to do more. Mm -hmm. And I'm stressing this because a lot of times people go, oh, well, my whole life doesn't do this, or I didn't know whole life could do that. Well, because we don't understand the trim levels <laughs> that, that is available at the car lot when, when we go to go buy the, this whole life insurance policy. So when we put money inside the bank account, inside a savings account, for example, we're being paid interest. And we just got wind uh, several years ago that if we put money into a whole life insurance policy, we get a death benefit and we get a savings account. I'm, I'm saying savings account for, for layman's terms. We get to store money that is also going to pay us interest mm -hmm. inside this product. So then we started asking ourselves, well, why do we keep our money inside the bank? Ask yourself that. Why do you keep your money inside the bank? Convenience. Yeah. 
very good point because it's very convenient. And then we started saying, well, if this person is going to pay us point whatever percent, but 0.01%. I think point zero one percent, but then I can get four percent over here. Can I just move my money over here to to the one that's going to pay me four percent? Ask that question to yourself. Which one do you want? Totally your decision. And and when we say ask yourself that, we also want you to compare the habits in which you're using your savings account because there's a lot of people that use their savings account that don't quite use it the way uh, we use ours. And when we say that, what we're saying is that we actually store money in our savings account for uh, an emergency. That means that we don't touch the money because we don't we don't necessarily need it. We we built up a habit of paying ourselves first, and the money that comes in our checking account is more than enough to, that we need to maintain our existing lifestyle. Mm-hmm. Now, for those of us who uh, may have an emergency every other week, <laughs> this it's not an apples to apples comparison because of how often you're using your uh, insurance policy to take care of small things instead of the major purchases uh, in your life. Absolutely. So we're more so using this from a a mindset shift of, okay, if I'm going to keep my savings account at the bank, I'm actually going to move it over here uh, to whole life insurance. And I'm just going to use this as a savings vehicle um, because I can store my cash there. And should anything happen to me, my family is going to get a death benefit. So for Darius and I, just off the top, we were like, hey, this is better for us because it gives us two benefits as opposed to one and we get more interest. Mm -hmm. So when we talk about storage, that this is what we're talking about. Just changing storage facilities. It's that simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. When we break it down in this way, we're just trying to make sure that you understand the options that you have because you can Mm. save your money in CDs. You can save your money in in other mechanisms. We just decide to do whole life insurance specifically. No other life insurance product, whole life insurance. Dividend paying whole life insurance. Mm -hmm. And uh, back to Carmen's point, in the event that we do need it for an emergency, we have access to those funds because of the trim level of the dividend paying whole life insurance (laughs) policy that we do have or that we're able to create for ourselves and for our clients. Absolutely. Now that we've beat that over the head (laughs) with storage facility, let's talk about financing. Um, So one thing too, let's stop and recognize that we finance everything we buy. We finance everything we buy. Well, what do you mean by that, Carmen? Is because you either have to save up the money. This is me making payments, saving up the money and then draining the savings account Or we go into debt, (laughs) this is me going into debt, and then we have to pay the money back, Mm -hmm. right? So you're making payments in either direction, that's called financing. So when you understand that you finance everything you buy, now the next question I want you to ask yourself is, do I have to use the bank to obtain financing? Are there other ways, other mechanisms, other products I can use to obtain financing? Mm -hmm. Now, the answer to that question, yes. The um, reason being is because when we talk about finance and the fact that we finance every single thing uh, in our life is we also use credit cards, which is a product by the uh, bank. We use it for mortgage, which is a product that is provided by the bank. We use it for our car note, which is a product provided to us by the bank. What if we are able to, instead of using the bank's funds, use our own funds and pay ourselves the interest that we would have paid to the bank? The reason why the interest is so important is because that's how the banks are able to be so successful. Banks are the most successful business in the entire world. It's because of the interest in which we pay when we borrow money from them. Mm -hmm. Now, imagine if we are able to borrow money from ourselves and pay ourselves the interest. The reason why it's important for us to pay ourselves the interest is so that we can have that accumulation of money the same way the banks have an accumulation of money to also lend money out to other individuals. Mm -hmm. What we want to do is we want to take on that responsibility ourselves because we have the discipline and we already have the habits. We want to do it ourselves so that we have more money. Very good point. So with that being said, when we think about our savings account in again, comparing it to the bank versus putting it in a life and whole life insurance specifically, if we take money from the savings account, do we replenish that money? No, no, we don't. But it does take us time to accumulate. It does. It does. And the reason why I say that is because typically when you take from your savings account, you don't have the mentality set up to say, I'm going to pay myself back the thousand dollars that I just took from this. Usually we just consider it a loss and we go thousand dollars is gone. Yep. Right. But we want you to change your mindset and go, if I'm going to take a thousand dollars from my savings account, I want this to look like a credit card. I want this to look like a loan. And if I'm going to take a thousand dollars from myself, I should replenish that thousand dollars plus some 
some interest. How about that for mindset? Because I have to do it at the bank. Mm -hmm. And if I have to do this at the bank, why am I not going to put the same respect on my own money that I'm the one working for? Right. Ask yourself that question. (laughs) Because we see it in the comments. Why would I pay myself interest? Why would I do this? Carmen Darius, you guys are crazy. It's just a mindset shift. And you can choose to do it or not. But these are things that we want you to think about. The bank is going to charge you interest to use their money. Why would you not charge your own self-interest to use your own money? Right. So moving forward (laughs) with that mentality, this is what we do inside whole life insurance policies. Because when we borrow money from our policies, we are treating it as a bank. Mm -hmm. We are banking the verb (laughs) with, with our whole life insurance policies. We are borrowing from it and we are paying ourselves back plus interest because we consider ourselves our own financiers, so to speak, and we're using the money the same way we would of financial institutions. Right. So the things that we finance using our bank was the very first thing, the very first time we we were introduced to this, we had a lot of credit card debt. Mm-hmm. So what we what we had done is we used the banks to finance our lifestyle. Now, when it came to replacing that, uh, I'm sorry, you just said a really good point. I just had to stop you because again, this is subconscious folks. And a lot of times we can be talking over your heads, but what we're trying to get you to understand are the things that you're doing on a daily basis that you don't think about. Mm -hmm. Darius just said, you're using the bank to finance your lifestyle. Do you know that? Do you know that you're doing that? Let me ask you this question. Who has your house? The bank has it. (laughs) Who has your car? The bank has it. Who has all them credit cards? The bank. So do you are you financing your lifestyle or is the bank? Ask yourself these questions. And I'm not being funny. I I am being funny. But um, what I mean is just we have to ask ourselves these questions. We have to be real. And the reason why we wanted to create this video is because we recognize how subconscious our banking habits are that we don't even recognize it sometimes. And we have to stop and check each other and go, wait, 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 which, which banking are we doing? Are we at uh, the banking institution down the street or are we using our policies? How are we financing our lifestyle? Yeah, and I think that the biggest piece that we miss is the opportunity in which we are able to earn interest. Yes. And because since we're paying the interest, which we were when we had our credit cards um we were paying a a lot of interest to the bank now when we replace that bank with us things change Mm -hmm. not just the 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 direction of the money but the also the interest in which we were able to pay ourselves now there's another thing that we didn't uh uh, recognize either when we're paying ourselves the interest is the difference between the amount of interest you earn at the bank versus the amount of interest that you can earn uh with the dividend paying whole life insurance policy you earn interest on top of the interest so if i'm earning interest and i'm paying interest in which i'm able to earn interest on top of what is that uh, the X factor. That's compound. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's, that's compound. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's a form of compound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And a, another form of compounding is the fact that we had multiple credit cards. So since we're paying ourselves on on multiple uh, uh, pieces of, of of cards or multiple pieces of products, we're able to pay ourselves back on multiple pieces of products. Which means that instead of us having five credit cards that's costing us money, we have five credits credit cards we have five contracts basically in which we're paying ourselves back that earns interest on each one of those yeah now let's break that down a little bit uh, more because when we talk about just the products itself Mm -hmm. savings account and your whole life insurance policy they are both going to pay you at a compounded rate They're both going to pay you at a compounded rate. What Darius was talking about is when you go to the bank and now you're paying your mortgage, your car, and your five credit cards, the the bank is now getting interest on five different products from you. That's hella compounding. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) You don't know it, right? But they're getting interest from all of these every single month, right? So all we said was, okay... A peep game. <laughs> Let me do this over here. So if I have credit cards and I have cash available inside my my policy, I'm going to actually pay off those cards and that same monthly payment that I was paying to the banks. I'm just going to go put those monthly payments over here into this account, <laughs> excuse me, and continue to pay that because those minimum payments include principal and interest. Mm-hmm. Right. So now not only am I earning the compounded rate bare minimum, I'm earning the interest off of all the five products that 
we have been paying on a monthly basis. And if you actually want to see those numbers, then you can click on uh, this video after you watch this whole video (laughs) where you can see how we took over all of our credit card debt with just using a policy. Right. Now, it's really important for you to understand these concepts because, again, if you're just going to pay the bank, we want to pay ourselves. Mm-hmm. Now, with the financing piece, um, th- th- there's other nuances and other things that we can go into as far as fees and how much does it cost me and all of that type of stuff. We're, it's not that we're not trying to share that information with you. We're just not trying to overcomplicate things too much today. So we just want you to get the concepts, get the concepts. If this makes sense to you, then the numbers will make sense to you. And it doesn't matter how much the insurance company is charging you, or it doesn't matter how much the bank is charging you. You'll look at the numbers and understand, okay, wait, at the end of the day, if I pay myself always, I'm going going to win regardless of how much it costs right that's how the banks always win Mm -hmm. is because somebody's always paying them interest Mm -hmm. and if you are paying somebody else interest why don't you replace that person with yourself Mm -hmm. and pay yourself the interest or use your family (laughs) to replace that so you can pay your family the interest yeah banks create money they create money by creating debt and we can do the exact same thing because of the interest. Mm-hmm. It's not about the principal. It's about the interest because that's how you're able to create money through interest payments. Absolutely. Now, the thing that I want to first uh, do now is to stop and and make sure that you all know that we are whole life insurance agents mm-hmm. or we are life insurance agents, but we only sell this type of product because this is our thing. <laughs> this yeah. is what we like to do. So before y'all say Carmen and Darius, this can't be done. We have six policies before y'all say Carmen and Darius, you've never done this before. We finance our lifestyle with our policies. Darius and Carmen, you know what you're talking about. We have thousands of clients that do this as well. And we have a school called the money school where we talk about this concept and how you can create this and do this in your daily life. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure that you all understand that this is possible. We talk about it because we do it. And we want to make sure that everyone knows that there's other options out there for you to utilize your money creatively. You don't have to do what we're doing. We're just talking about whole life insurance today. It, it's it's not for everybody, but it's something that you should at least understand because what we feel is that there's such a, a misconception as far as what you can do with life insurance and what's available and how can you use it. And we just want to bring to light the possibilities that that are available to you if you educate yourself and take the time to know what's going on. Now, the other thing too that I want to talk about is, again, we're only talking about whole life insurance. In the comments we get all the time, well, can I use in an IUL? Can I use other sor- sorts of, of uh, life insurance products? And we are only talking about whole life insurance. Dividend paying whole life. Dividend paying. And the reason being is because this is the only insurance product that provides a guarantee. Why is this so important to us is because, again, we're talking about our savings account. We're using our savings account in a completely different way. And if we're using our savings account, we want guarantees. We don't want our money to be invested or to to mimic what's happening in the market. We want our savings account to be consistent. Whatever risks or whatever comes from that is going to be what we do with the money that's inside of the the cash value. Right. That's the difference. You know, one thing that came up to me, it's a little off topic, but, and I I apologize, is the fact (laughs) that there can be a run on a bank right yes in which everybody goes to the bank at the same time and asks for their money and the bank won't have it yes there can't be a run on the insurance company because they have all the money and that's a nugget folks (laughs) that that, that's a nugget the reason being is because the insurance companies um actually have the money on hand Mm -hmm. um they they deal with a completely different concept when it comes to banking because they have to provide death claims and dare the insurance company not have a death claim available for the millions of people that die every single year right they Mm -hmm. have to have the money on hand and they have to bank they have to invest strategically to make sure that they can cover all the the heads right so that's literally that's a that's a that's a very important distinction that you have to understand with this whole money game and how this whole thing is played. And the reason why we even stumbled into this in the first place is because we were investing in real estate and the gentleman who was investing with us borrowed from his whole life insurance policy to finance his deal. And we thought he was crazy. (laughs) Right. And it wasn't until we started asking more questions and we left all of those stereotypes behind that people were saying, you can't do that. That doesn't make sense. It's not, it's cost you too much. And then we did it ourselves and we're like, actually, no, it works. <laughs> it works. No, what what costs us money is financing our lifestyle through somebody somebody else through mm-hmm. a third party. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we're able to finance it ourselves, 
that's it's that makes us it the most efficient for us and for our family. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. So with that being said, we just want to reiterate: what do you use the bank for? Storage and financing. And until you come to terms with the fact that you can use the storage facility and financing capabilities and other products to your benefit then that might open the world that we're talking about, which is banking and utilizing life insurance to replace some of the banking functions that you use. Right Now, again, this is something that is on a different level. So as soon as you continue to open your mind to to the different possibilities of creative financing, um, we're excited for you to to open the, the chapter of the book that we're talking about and apply it to your life. Right. Now, if you want to learn more information about this, definitely click on the link below so that you can watch our free masterclass that goes in a little detail about how you can finance your car and who else is using this product. And check out the next video where you see how we paid off all of our credit card debt with whole life insurance. Remember to own your own lifestyle or someone else will.